Hi, I'm Krista Jacobson, headmistress of the Buddha Dukai, where we teach authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu. And for those of you who don't know what that is, those are the ancient martial arts of the ninjin samurai. In today's lesson, we will be discussing Miyamoto Masashi's first duel, so his first fight as a 13-year-old boy. Uh, we will also be discussing his mentality that he had in his first duel, because I think that's the most important aspect of this particular lesson. Um, I will be pulling from multiple different sources. However, I will say that the base source of information will come from the book The Lone Samurai, The Life of Miyamoto Masashi by William Scott Wilson. So I'll be reading from this. Um, as I read, I'll take a few breaks and I'll make sure that I stop and give you guys a little added information, some insight uh, as to what is going on in the particular story as well, okay? Um, because there's a couple little tidbits that I find very interesting that's not really discussed too in depth in that particular book, okay? Now, before I begin, I want to say that if you guys are interested in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai bujutsu, so koru ninjutsu or koru bujutsu, uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Um, if you guys are interested in reality-based self-defense, weapons training, survival training, martial arts philosophy, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the little bell. That way you guys get the notifications. I do post two to three videos a week on my YouTube channel. Um, and if you get the notifications, you guys can keep up with everything that we do. Okay? So, here we go. Uh, the Lone Samurai, The Life of Miyamoto, Miyamoto Masashi, again written by William Scott Wilson. Okay? So, uh, we're going to skip all the way up to... Um, uh, the way of the sword, right? So first strike is uh, we're on that particular section of the book. One morning in 1596, just outside of the village of Hirofuku, in the province of Banshu, Arima Kihei, a swordsman of the Shinto Ryu, sat waiting for a formal apology. This was to be delivered by a 13-year-old boy, Miyamoto Benesuke. Kihei had arrived in the area a few days earlier, put up a simple bamboo fence, and erected a place card announcing in large gold letters that he would accept a match with anyone willing to enter a contest of skill with him. Why he chose to come to such an out-of-the-way place such as Hirofuku is uncertain. He may have heard of a master of the sword and jute, a certain uh, Hirata Munisei, lived not too far away and hoped to attract his attention. He was, however, to be disappointed. It was a young Benesuke, rather than the seasoned Munasai or any other wandering samurai, who noticed the place card. On his way home, at the time from calligraphy lesson, Benesuke took out his brush and ink and smeared over the letters of uh, Kihei's sign and, in a fit of bravado, wrote, Miyamoto Benesuke, reciting at the Shodren Inn, uh, will give you a match tomorrow. So we're going to take little break right there and let's make sure we're on the same page here. So there's this wandering samurai, Kihei, right? Um, he's a swordsman and he's going to all these different villages. He's a Shugiosha and he's traveling the land trying to make an, a, a name for himself as a swordsman, probably trying to find a job, get employed by a daimyo, get into an army somewhere, trying to show how good he is with the sword. And he goes in this little out of the way place, this little small little village out of the way uh, in, in Hirofuku. And he places up this big sign. He says, here I am. I'm going to take on anybody that's in the, in here. And, and, you know, I'm willing to fight anybody here. Of course, he wants to fight someone with a name. Of course, he wants to fight someone, you know, good. Because then if he whoops that ass, basically what is happening, he makes a name for himself. So imagine, right, here's this 13-year-old boy walks by, sees the sign, and then writes on there, yeah, I'll, I'll be here tomorrow. You know, I'll, I'll kick your ass tomorrow. Make sure you're here. So, of course, you know, Kihei doesn't know this is a 13-year-old boy at this point, but still, it takes some freaking balls to do something like that, right? I mean, we're talking about in a time period where people killed each other. This isn't like, I mean, not that they don't do that in today's world, but, you know, they're, they're openly, they're, they're, it was illegal to openly challenge someone to a life or death duel, right? Right in the middle of the street. Like that, that people kill each other today, but they don't do that kind of stuff. So, you know, take, let's look at the mentality of that, right? So here we go. When Kihei returned to the spot and saw this bit of vandalism, he responded by sending a discipline to the Shoren Inn, where the youngster Benesuke lived with his uncle, the priest Doren. As Kihei's uh, disciple informed the priest that his master wished to accept the challenge from Benesuko, uh, Benesuke. The priest turned and explained that Benesuke was only 13 and that his challenge was just an adolescent prank. 
When informed of this, Kihei sent a message to Doran and he, uh, that he understood, but he would need a formal apology from the boy in order to clear his honor. The priest readily accepted these terms. So, uh, right there. So, let, let's go back to the now. Let's, let's get away from the book and then let's paint the picture. So, Kihei sees someone had posted, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm going to whoop that ass tomorrow. And he's like, okay. So, he sends a servant and he goes, okay, make sure we're getting this, we're going to get this done. So, let's, let's, let's tie the loose ends up and let's make sure we're doing this tomorrow. So, he goes over to the Shonen Inn and he sees this priest, Doran which the priest is actually Miyamoto's uncle. Now, we're gonna take a little side note here. Um, I had already shot this video once, but the damn video was so freaking long because I added so much information. I talked about uh, Miyamoto when he was first born, his dad, his dad is a samurai, um, the people that his dad had trained with, the people that he knew, some of the stuff that he had done, and I really painted this uh, in that particular video, I really painted a lot of information of the background of Miyamoto Musashi, but the video was so damn long, and honestly, I really just wanted to make a video about Musashi's first duel. So, um, if you guys want, I will make another video on that topic, um, but uh, I want to say that it will be quite a lengthy video um, because there's a lot of information that needs to be discussed, uh, not just in um, a factual base, but also folklore, uh, what is the popular understanding, why some of the, the popular understanding isn't absolutely absolutely correct. Not that it's wrong, it just some of it isn't as correct as it is written. But nonetheless, I, I decided to say fuck it, I'm reshooting the whole damn thing because I just want to talk about this one particular point, which was uh, Miyamoto Musashi's first duel. So uh, what we need to know that he is now with his uncle, his uncle is a um, in the temple, right? And he's a priest and his name is Doran. So when Kihei saw this calligraphy all written up, yeah, I'm, I'm you know, Benosuke and I'm going to kick that ass tomorrow. He sends his um, uh, his servant over to Shoren in the temple to talk to Doran and say, okay, we're going to set up this fight with Benesuke. You know, we need to tie the loose ends. What time are we going to do this? Blah, blah, blah. So Doran looks at him and says, whoa, this is just my nephew. This is just my kid. This is basically my kid. I'm raising him. He's a 13-year-old kid. It's a prank. He did it, you know, out of strict, just being a dumbass 13-year-old kid. Uh, the fight isn't going to happen. Uh, so he goes back to Kihei and he says, hey, look, it was a 13-year-old prank. Uh, this is really, it isn't really a duel. So now here he's in this town. Imagine you're, you're the swordsman and you're traveling around trying to make a name for yourself. And you go to this small little town and 13-year-old kid's like, yeah, I'm going to kick your fucking ass. And then if he doesn't see the kid for a public apology, well, then he kind of looks like a punk, right? So he says, okay, well, I'll tell you what. We'll do a public apology, and um, after the public apology, then I'll just move on to the next town. Yeah, it is what it is. So it's kind of where we're at right now. So, uh, so right there. So uh, the priest accepted. You know, Doran accepted to these terms. So they were going to fall. They were going to go up and and give an apology. So the here we go back to the book. So uh, the following morning, Kihei sat waiting for the priest and the boy uh, to set the matter right. A number of villagers who had heard of the incident was also also gathered probably to witness and enjoy the humiliation of a wayward child who was always causing uh, you know trouble in the town but Doran and Benesuke approached people noticed that the latter uh, Benesuke uh, was carrying a six-foot staff then to everyone's surprise just at the moment uh, the apology was to be made instead of bowing in, hu in humility Benesuke charged Kihei was not expecting this and may have been caught off guard, but he was a practiced swordsman. Dodging the blow, he unsheathed the sword and took a stance. Surely the onlookers must have thought this was a brash young challenger, had no chance at all. But after a few exchanges, right, Benesuke suddenly threw down a staff and then started grappling with Kihei. He then picked up the swordsman and threw him down head first. Recovering his staff, he beat Kihei to death and returned home. There's a lot of information there. Now, there is more information on this particular um, fight in this book. I just don't want to read the book. You know what I mean? You guys can buy the book if you want to. But it goes a little bit more into Kihei and some other things like that. But what I just read is you know, the primary of what happened. So now let's think of – let's talk about this real quick. So here we have um, this 13-year-old boy walking with his uncle who's a priest. And they're going to go give a formal apology in front of the whole town. This 13-year-old boy is a six-foot staff, so basically a Rokushaku bow, right? Now, his dad was a samurai and was highly trained in kenjutsu, jujutsu, amongst many other arts. So, uh, he goes walking up to this guy thinking he's going to give a formal apology. To be quite honest, um, there's many other sources that talk about different incidents and things of this, that, and the other. 
But what I will say is I'm pretty positive that Kihei probably said something very smart ass, you know, like, you know, bow to me boy or something that pretty much made, you know, Musashi feel like degraded or humiliated. So, you know, he's fuck that. But if, if you can imagine the mindset of a 13 year old boy with a stick run after a, a swordsman. The swordsman draws a sword, steps back, draws a sword, and they start having exchanges. And at this moment, ben, uh, Musashi, of course, he hasn't changed his name yet at this point in his life, but he jumps in, and then he picks him up and throws him. So he uses some form of a nage waza, whether it's ogoshi or, you know, ipan seinagi or whatever, but it's a fucking major hip throw and drops the guy on his fucking head. I mean, that right there alone takes a lot of fucking balls. That takes a hell of a mentality of someone to have a 13-year-old kid to go after a seasoned swordsman, a seasoned samurai, grab him and throw him on his ass. Once he hits the ground, Musashi grabs a stick and then a stick, not a sword. He didn't grab the guy's sword. He didn't grab a short sword. He didn't grab a spear. He grabbed a fucking stick, a six-foot staff, a Roku Shaku bow, and then just beat the guy to death. I mean, can you imagine the mentality of a 13-year-old kid with a stick hammering on someone's head? I mean, we're talking about, that goes down the line of like some Michael Myers type stuff where you're just like beating on someone's head over and over and over until he's dead. And all, all that was supposed to happen was a formal apology. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I wanted to talk about because in today, everyone talks about the the, the, the greatness of Miyamoto Musashi. And I, and I do think that Miyamoto Musashi, greatest swordsman, you know, and I absolutely love Musashi's work. Uh, but obviously, um, uh, Miyamoto Benesuke later on changed his name to Miyamoto Musashi. And he wrote, in, in my opinion, one of the top um, seven, uh, I have a list that I teach all my students, but the top seven um, uh, books, if you will, or um, document works of martial arts of Japanese martial arts and it's called the book of five rings and I absolutely love the book of five rings if there if I could say there's one book that I use the most is referencing within excuse me my my teachings here at the dojo I would say that it would be the book of five rings I absolutely love it I think it's a wonderful piece of work um, but the mentality of that I think that's what makes Musashi so great because not only did he have a, an artistic mind where he understand deep thought and philosophy he also he, he literally from a very very young age this wasn't someone who trained in martial arts at you know 10 years old 13 years old 15 years old had a master they were in a dojo setting you know he earns himself to be a low-ranking samurai he goes to war through war he kinda gets battle hardened a little bit you know Although all those things did happen in his life, we're talking at from a 13-year-old boy, he was already dropping people in their fucking head and then beating them to death with a stick. That takes a hell of a mentality, right? So the fact that he had such, in, in Japanese, in Japanese uh, philosophy, right? In the dojo, we talk of in and yo, right? Or the dark and the light. I mean, he has a fucking switch. That shit's like... You know what I mean? And um, that's just, it's an amazing, amazing story. And it really paints uh, his, 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 his instinct, his, his heart, his drive of, of being a warrior at that time. And then obviously, you know, he gets older. And as he gets older, you know, he writes various different works. And he will oh, and change his name to uh, Miyamoto Masashi, becomes the greatest swordsman of Japan, and writes probably, in my opinion, one of the greatest works of all times, The Book of Five Rings. So anyway, this is uh, today's lesson. Again, we talked about the first duel of Miyamoto Masashi. I used the book, The Lone Samurai, The Life of Miyamoto Masashi, written by William Scott Wilson. This is not one of my top seven, top 10 books, to be quite honest with you, uh, but it is a good book. So if you guys don't have this on your shelf, I definitely think it's a good one to stick on your shelf. It's a good read if you guys are into Miyamoto Masashi, right? I think everyone should have the Book of Five Rings, but you know, it's still it's still a pretty good book, okay? Um, uh, real quick outro for you guys. If you guys are interested, again, in authentic ninjutsu and classical samurai, Samurai Bujutsu. Um, if you guys are interested in actually training in the ancient martial arts of the ninja and samurai, please check out my website at www.budodoninjutsu.com. There you can see a list of our schools. If you don't live next to one of our schools, you also join the online ninjutsu dojo and you can train with me um, in our online dojo. Okay. Um, also, if you go to our website, again, budodoninjutsu.com, you can also see where it says Gohono Keiko. You can see all the different um, uh, 
uh, areas of training that we have, different skill sets, uh, the various different traditions that we teach here within the school. And like I said, if you guys are interested, please call one of the schools that's closest to you, or you can join the online Ninjutsu Dojo and train with me uh, through digital, through the online dojo, through digital means. Okay. So thank you guys very much for all of your love and support. I deeply appreciate it. Until next time, take care, be safe and, um, good luck in your journey of Budo. Bye.